Welcome to this segment of the program. Inuagata no Sahai is the name. And today our conversation this morning is going to be on the topic six ways to be a high value employee to your employer. Six ways to be a high value employee to your employer. And the first one is when you are a solution asset to your employer. When you are a solution asset employee to your employer. You know, a solution asset employee is an employee that is reputed, that is reputed, I beg your pardon, that is reputed for preferring worldwide solutions to the problems of the organizations, to the challenges of his employer and his boss. <coughs> Excuse me. That's what makes you, you know, a solution asset employee. When you are known for not problem blaming, when you are known for not, you know, sensationalizing problem, but you are known for always bringing solutions to the table, there is no way you will not be a high-value employee to your employer when you are a solution asset to your employer. You know, you are not there looking for the person to place the blame on and say, this is the reason I couldn't get, uh, this is the person that is responsible for why I couldn't get the job done. Or you are looking for situations to blame and say, this is the reason I couldn't get the job done. You always ask yourself the question of, what do I do in this situation? What do I do? And that question of what do I do will always just help you to now start thinking of the way out. You start asking questions, you know, doing researches, you know, carrying out findings to now help you bring solution to the table. Because the reason you are on the payroll of that organization in the first place is to come and solve problems. And so when you are reputed for problem solving, when you are reputed for always bringing solutions to the table to your employer, that makes you a high value employee to your employer. This is so key. This is so key because the reason any organization exists in the first place is problem solving. And you are there to solve problems. When you work with the mindset and orientation of a problem solver, you will always consistently bring, you know, solution to the table. <coughs> this is just so important. Now, the second one is when you engage in constant capacity building. Now, look at what I said. The, the, the first way to be a high-value employee to your employer, you need to, you know, be a solution asset employee. Now, capacity is the ability to bring solutions to the table. Capacity building is strengthening and enhancing that ability to bring solutions to the table. For you to consistently bring solutions to the table, you also need to regularly, consistently build capacity. You need to be capacity building focused, always threatening and enhancing that ability to always prefer solutions is capacity building. You can't just compromise this. You can't just joke with this. You must be capacity building focused. You were brought in to solve problems and the way to consistently be you know, a regular problem solver is capacity building. What is capacity? I will reiterate. Capacity is the ability to bring solutions to the table. Capacity building is strengthening and enhancing that ability to bring solutions to the table. And this requires regular self-development, constant self-development. If you have to you know, register for a program, go ahead and do that. Go online for free courses, you know, interface with people that have gone ahead of you, who have better experiences than you, interface with them, build strategic relationship with them, leverage on their years of experience, which most of the time you will not find in the pages of books. And then also, you know, when, if you have the book money to register for that master's program, register for it. But let me add here, you're not having the book money to register for that master's program should not be a hindrance to your having a master's brain. It shouldn't be. You may not have the certification, but you can have the education. You may not have the certificate, you can have the certificate. You can get to know the, you know, you can get to acquire the know-how. 
the expertise. There is no course they are doing in that master's program in the higher institution that you will not find books on those courses in the bookshops. So with your 2,000 naira today, you can get a book in that area, read it, study it, build capacity. With your 800 naira in the future, you can buy another material in that, on that area. With your 5,000 naira, with your 3,000 naira, consistently just buying materials on that area, you know, even going online, get content on that area. This will help you to build capacity and acquire that master's expertise. Even when you don't have the master's certificate, you can still have the master's expertise. You know, Dr. Miles Moron of Blessed Memory said that a school is a place where you pay them to force you to study. You know, and at the end of the day, they give you a certificate that, yes, you have actually studied. And, and, all, the, and all the rest. So, even when you are not in the structured or formal school system, you can still acquire that same knowledge. In short, when you study the books written by industry experts, people that are in the marketplace, people that are in the field, you know, you will even glean more knowledge, build more capacity, you know, far beyond what somebody who did masters some years ago, three, five years ago, have done. Because somebody can come up with a discovery, with a finding, with a research today, you know, that will just make nonsense of what your professor taught you three years ago of what your professor taught you five years ago in that master's program. So constant capacity building is critical. Like I said, you're not having the book money to register for that master's program should not be a hindrance to your having a master's brain. You may not have the certificate. You may not have the certification, but you can have the education. This is so key. The third one, how to be a high-value employee to your employer is when your employer worry less because of you. When your employer worry less because of you. Now, the teams exist to solve problems. You were brought in to come and solve problems. Please, don't become the problem your employer is now trying to solve. Your employer brought you in to come and help him to solve problems. Don't become the problem your employer is now trying to solve. If that becomes a situation, you may not be there for a very long time. It's so key. You know this. You see situations whereby some, some, some employee, employees fight with colleagues. You know, they, 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 they fight with vendors, with suppliers. They always have issues with customers. You know, they are insubordinating to their, you know, uh, leader, to their uh, supervisors. They have become problems to the system. You know, the, the, the employer, you know, is always having worries concerning, you know, this particular employee. Then there are even some employees that may be supervisors. These supervisors constantly need supervision. The employer finds it very difficult to travel for one week because the supervisor needs supervision. That is a situation whereby the man that was employed to solve problem is not the problem of the system. That will not make you a high-value employee to your employer. But if you want to be a high-value employee to your employer, just make sure that you do everything possible to make your employer worry less because of you. Then the fourth one, when you are reputed for going the extra mile. <clears throat> going the extra mile is going beyond what you are paid to do. And going the extra mile is the key to higher heights. People that goes beyond what they are paid to do are normally considered for promotion first. Going the extra mile is the pathway to higher height. It's going beyond what you are paid to do. And one amazing thing about going the extra mile is that it gives you an opportunity to build more expertise. Because you, got, you get yourself be, you know, beyond your, 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 the box you are operating. You go, you go outside the, the usual box, you go outside your usual routine, you know, and you discover that you may not just know anything about what to do, but in the process of asking questions, being you know, told what to do and all that, you build more expertise. Learn to go the extra mile for your employer. Going the extra mile is the key to higher heights. Going the extra mile will make you to be easily considered for promotion. And when you go the extra mile, don't do it with an attitude of high service. Do it with a sincerity of purpose. Do it with this attitude that you really want to help, that you really want to help the system to solve problems. This will make you to be a high value employee to your employer. This is so important. I remember one of my mentees, you know, he 
at a time, he worked with a microfinance bank. And he was employed as a field officer, as a marketer. When he goes to the field for marketing, he will normally wrap up towards uh, 3, 4 p.m., return to the office. And then when he returns to the office, he will always give a happy hand to the assistant deputy operations manager in that particular microfinance bank. That is going the extra mile. Employed for field work, employed for marketing. When he returns to the office, he will always give a happy hand to the deputy operations manager to help him with some operational work. And that was helping him to build expertise, helping him to build more capacity and more know-how. A time came, the deputy operations manager was promoted to become the operations manager. And that, that new operations manager now was asked, who will you recommend to assist you? He recommended this young man who always gave him a helping hand, who, go, who returns from the field and give him a helping hand in operation you know, matters when he was the assistant deputy operations manager. And that young man became his deputy operations manager. Those who go the extra mile are the ones that are normally considered for promotion. Going the extra mile is a pathway to higher heights. Then the fifth one is when you are a strategic communicator. When you are a strategic communicator. Now, it is so important as an employee to be a high value employee to your employer. Learn to study the mood of your employer. There are times whereby it is not necessary for you to bring something up before him. He just returning, he just you know returning from a journey. He just got into the office in the morning, and the next thing is that you are just hitting him with that your powerful ideas. You know you want to uh, pass across. Now that idea can really be powerful, but many powerful ideas have been trashed because they were presented at the wrong time. You need to learn to study the mood of your employer. Learn and know when to bring an idea to the table. A word in season, how good it is, says the Holy Scriptures. Learn to know when to bring an idea to the table. You know, also, equally learn how to present your idea. It is one thing to know the strategic time to bring it before your boss. It's another different ball game entirely to know the strategic way to present it so that your, 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 your boss will buy into it, your employer will buy into it. This is so important. You need to have that selling skill. You know, selling transcends beyond the ability to make people buy products. It's also to the ability to make people to embrace your idea, your concept. Have that strategic, you know, communication skill. Be able to sell your idea, present it in a way that it will be, you know, embraced, and you'll be able to move forward with that line of thought in advancing the course of the organization and also advancing yourself. This is so key. The sixth one, which is the concluding one, is when you don't work against the interest of your employer. When you don't work against the interest of your employer. Now, the man that gives you a paycheck is deserving of your loyalty. You work in that system. You are not against the interest of the system. Neither are you against the interest of your employer. You don't work against the system. And because you are there, people who may be planning to work against the system are afraid to do so because they know that you will not be a party to it. They know that you will not allow it. This is so important. This will make you a high-value employee to your employer. That is just the bottom line truth. You know, as a way of review, what we have learned today is six ways to be a high-value employee to employer. The first one is when you are a solution asset employee to your employer. The second one is when you engage in constant capacity building. The third one is when your employer worry less because of you. The fourth one is when you are reputed for going the extra mile. The fifth one is when you are a strategic communicator. The sixth one is when you don't work against the interests of your employer. I, I know. I know that lots of value have been added to you today. I know you are itching to reach me so that we can discuss, take this to the next level, and probably handle this kind of training session in a more elaborate way with your employees, with your workers, with your team. My phone numbers are right there on the screen. The first one is 080-66-86-5060. I take it again. 080-66-86-5060. Eight six five zero six zero. That is the second line there. Is zero eight zero five two nine two nine one two zero zero eight zero 
0529291120. If you are watching from outside Nigeria, just add our beloved country code plus 234-8066-865060. Do the same with the other number and then you'll be able to reach me directly and then we can talk and take things to the next level. I'll be seeing you next week Wednesday. When I return, I'll remain the amiable Inuarata no Sahai. God bless you.